welcome everybody. I'm really looking forward to today's session. Um, it's it's nearly the middle of Happy Hump Day, and <laughs> Wednesday is always one of those um, kind of odd days in the week. And at the end of what feels like a month of about 1500 days, never mind um, 31 days in January, it's been a long, um, quite dark lockdown month. Um, and I think everybody is is kind of coping with that in their own different ways. So I'll be really interested in, in kind of today's session. We've got a couple of speakers to talk about well-being and how, you know, being more physical and active really makes a massive impact um, on on all parts of your health, um, not just um, your your bum or wherever else you're trying to kind of improve your, your kind of physical look and feel. Um, we've got time at the end for questions, but and I think I suspect there'll be lots of questions and I just kind of wanted to share a couple of things. Um, you know, I think nearly every conversation I'm having at the moment Obviously, people are talking about lockdown. They're talking about, you know, the the length of of how long we've been dealing with this pandemic, the vaccination program, people's health, and the the kind of the impact on the NHS that that we're currently seeing. Um, and even just literally an hour ago, I was talking to somebody from Belfast who um, has got family that all work in NHS, talking about with her about the impact of good diet or bad diet on on how the the kind of the, this specific virus has an impact to us we were talking about vitamin d and I, I guess that's maybe going to come up today because you know it struck me that uh, uh, uh you know the scottish government specifically in the, in the first lockdown were, were talking about us all getting out and doing that hour of exercise and i i can't tell you how busy the streets around us were you know the amount of couples i saw out that you know rarely I ever saw it together, never mind out having an hour's walk to each other. So it's just it, the way that we've kind of dealt with this this whole pandemic, um, I think, has made people think about themselves and their personal fitness. Um, if you know me, that you would know that um, I kind of probably go through fits and starts of being the biggest couch potato ever. You have a desk job and you don't move. Um, last year, I decided to lose a lot of weight because I was going to have a beach holiday with pals and didn't want to kind of have some of my really stunning friends show me up on the beach so I lost a lot of weight and then in the autumn you go well how do I keep this off and the best way to do it is to get more physical and I signed up for a charity walking running challenge in September to to cover a, a hundred K in the month and actually I'm really I got a bit competitive and did 100 miles in the month to myself which I was really proud of um but then the the colder months come and you kind of stop doing so much um and I definitely know I mean I've got an Apple watch I've got all the kit but my steps some days are not even 5,000 steps so um you really have to kind of work hard at it and one of the things I signed up for in the new year and how many of you have come across these things is conquer virtual events so there's an app you kind of walk and choose your route yeah you pay for it but it's helped me kind of so I've got an Inca Trail medal and that was a marathon that I covered by logging my kind of steps and my exercise and um, I've since done a, a Giza trail which has been double the the length of that and I'm currently walking the um, one of the um, walks along the south of Australia virtually but I can't wait till we can get out and kind of do something physical and as I said I think doing something in a team but something you've got personal kind of a personal challenge around is really important so in February I've signed up to the Chaz 280,000 step challenge uh, and for me that's a massive challenge because normally uh, I've just looked back at my steps over the last few days 4,200 and something um, every day and for those of you that have got really physical jobs I'm looking at Mary for example and some of her staff that, that work in Rossi on their feet all day um, you know will have no problems at all in clocking up 10,000 steps but for me that's a, a big challenge um, and a long 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 time ago I did um, a, a Caledonian challenge which is very similar to I think to, to what Steve's going to talk about in the Cataran Yomp and the Chamber is looking forward to having a team in the Cataran Yomp this year so so let's hope we can all get out and kind of get on the hills and, and kind of help ourselves be a bit more active. So um, today we're going to hear um, about the benefits of physical activity but I'd like to introduce uh, Steve to you because Steve is our webinar sponsor today and is going to tell us more about um, his particular organisation and their challenge. So Steve, over to you. 
Thank you, Alison, and hello, everybody. Um, it's a real privilege to be here this morning. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, my name's Steve Oatley, and I'm one of the founders of the Catarone uh, over 10 years ago, and I'm currently the head of events at ABF, the Soldiers Charity. Um, needless to say, the past 10 months have been a very challenging time for, uh, for the events industry, for the charities, um, and really across every sector. Um, but I'm hopeful for this year, and I feel there's plenty of green shoots of recovery coming. And uh, uh, I'm delighted to be here today, and I'm really excited to hear from Osla to hear a little bit more about uh, wellbeing. And, um, and then I'll come back later on to tell you about a brilliant goal that you can set yourselves for the summer. So yes, Osla. Thanks, Steve. Osla, over to you. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Osla Allen. I'm from the University of Dundee. I teach in the Institute of Sport and Exercise. So if you bear with me, I'm going to attempt to share a document with you. I am fabulous at teaching press ups, but I am quite ropey when it comes to any of the IT that has been required um, throughout this lockdown. It makes me very anxious. So I'm doing that whole, oh, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to work properly and it will all be fine. You know, you know how it is. You've been there, you've tried it and you've um, happily come through the other side to see uh, what's going on. So let's see if this, ups, this works. Um, as this comes up online. OK, so. Alison, you can maybe give me a thumbs up if you can see this or no, you're not seeing this no, at what, all. What, are you? what we're seeing is the, the kind of the file window that lets you open okay. your file rather than the actual um, window that's got your PowerPoint in it. Uh, okay. So you might you might ah, need to yes. unshare and come back. Okay. Well, let's try that again. How are we now? Yes, if you press play slideshow uh, and yeah, and we're good to go. Brilliant. Hey. Thank you for that. See, there's always somebody who's friendly and helpful and who can get me on course. So that's what I love. So hi, everyone. Um, my job is programmes manager. And as part of that, I uh, work with staff and students at the university and try and um, coax them through various um, health and wellbeing um, webinars, etc. So just basically trying to help and support people in um, my community. So I think that's probably why I've been invited along uh, to talk to you today. I was I said, oh, right, well, I can talk a lot about physical activity. So um, give me give me three topics. So Sarah um, Young and myself, we've come up with why does physical activity improve your mental health? Um, why is it difficult to motivate myself to be and stay physically active? And then how can I set achievable goals for physical activity? So those are the three topic areas that I'm going to cover um, hopefully today. So you'll be able to see um, or get an insight into this area. But there's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of it's quite a lot of um, surrounding information. There's lots of it, so um, I'm going to try and rattle through uh, one or two things. Firstly, I am not a medical professional, um, so I don't diagnose mental health conditions. If you or someone you know is really struggling um, with poor mental health, then seek help. Make sure that you um, make an appointment with your GP. You can, through your GP, access the things that I've outlined here. Um, one thing I said to Sarah today is you don't kind of need to write things down. I will send this session to Sarah um, and then she'll forward that on to you if you are interested. So all the information that you'll see on screen, I'll send that to you. So it's just to let you know, um, we're going to talk about um, general mental health for most of the population. 
Um, so yeah, why, why why does physical activity do you good um, in terms of your mental health? Um, and do you want to think about essentially your mind, your mood, your thoughts, your feelings? Um, why, when you go out for a walk or you do a circuit class or you join in some kind of online HIIT training or you go out in your kayak or you cycle on your bike, what actually happens to you um, to give you these psychological benefits? Most people know about some of the physical benefits, but the psychological ones, not so much. So. Normally, if we had plenty of time, I would ask you these questions and get you to tell me, but we're a bit short on time today, so I've popped up um, some to think about. So we want to essentially utilise activity to help us to think quickly, quicker and clearer, can boost our mental energy, reduce anxiety, reduce stress, improve things like our confidence, our sleep. I know that right through this lockdown, um, People have got really disturbed sleep um, and being physically active is one way of trying to help improve that sleep pattern and help you sleep more and have better quality of sleep. So just not being in bed and tossing and turning, but actually having proper good quality sleep. It's difficult to increase our socialisation, but sometimes on online um, it platforms for activity, we can still have increased socialisation. So, for example, I'm doing online dance classes. I do them in the evening. So I get to see my online dance buddies and we do still have a chance to wave and chat. So although that's diminished a little um, with the level of the restrictions that we've got at the moment, but we can still get that. And again, everything that we can do can enhance our mood and also help just just to breathe, just to be more calm, um, just to help with the anxiety of the situation. So in general, those are um, some of the reasons why it's important to be uh, physically active. So I've mentioned their stress reduction, and it's really important that we understand a little bit more about stress. We have um, Acute stress, which is something um, that we should have in our lives. So it's um, perhaps you're, you're, you're organising an event for today, Sarah, and you're like, oh, the anxiety levels are up. I want to make sure all the IT is working. Gay, okay, get on that. Um, and that's OK, because it's something that ha is short term. It happens. Um, we are enlivened and invigorated by that. Great. But when we have chronic stress and we have increased anxiety levels for a long period of time that is not good for our health at all. Um, people think that being stressed is something that happens in your head and actually it's not that at all. Yes, you have thoughts and feelings around stress, but you also have physical things that happen to your body when you're in periods of chronic stress. We have elevated levels of uh, corticosteroids, so our body is constantly flushing hormones around our system to make sure that all our uh, organs work and so that we function as human beings. But when we have chronic stress, those levels are elevated. Many, many years ago, um, when we were living in caves and uh, there would be like a, a big scary dinosaur um, would arrive and then everybody would be like, definitely don't want to be the lunch of the big scary dinosaur. Your body prepares you for stress um, so that you can fight or flight. So we know this about our bodies. Um, but what happens is if you are constantly in this fight or flight mode and you are sitting at a desk, um, you are kind of feel tied to your home, um, that's, that's not going to work out well. So you need to know that when you are chronically stressed, we are reducing our immune function. And in a global pandemic, 
that is not good. We definitely don't want to be reducing our immune function um, when there's the COVID going around. So definitely we want to make sure we're um, reducing our stress levels. You might not have heard of catabolism before. It's definitely not a very nice process, but essentially um, your body seeks to eat your own muscle to um, energise you. We definitely don't want that. And bearing in mind that our organs are made out of muscle, um, that's definitely not good. So probably I can't see the whites of your eyes, so maybe your eyeballs have gotten a little bit bigger um, when I've mentioned uh, catabolism. But it's definitely something that's not good for our health, so we don't want that. But the thing that's really important that you really need to know about is, so that you can run away from the big scary dinosaur, our bodies developed a system where they flush sugar from your liver into your system so that you can power your body to run away from the big scary dinosaur. And if you are constantly chronically stressed, your sugar levels in your blood are constantly elevated. And that's not good because elevated sugar levels, if it's untreated, it can lead to type 2 diabetes. So stress, it's not something that happens in your head. It's also physical. It's really important to know that if you're chronically stressed, you need to be doing something about it. So, um, so to move on from the negative, what can we do um, about chronic stress? Well, loads of things. Um, number one, regular exercise improves the body's ability to control blood sugar. So when you eat, your body knows what to do with that sugar. It knows how to effectively use it and to effectively store it and then eventually, um, effectively take it from stores to use it. So a trained body, so somebody who's out walking or doesn't need to be doing press ups, your body knows what to do with blood sugar. And then the second thing, and I'm not going to talk a lot about nutrition today because I don't have um, oodles of time. But what I would say is if you could think about eating less refined sugar, um, because essentially if your sugar levels are high and then you have more sugar, um, we are definitely um, throwing what I call fuel onto the fire. Um, one thing that you would need to know, um, ladies out there of a certain age, um, if you are um, perimenopausal or menopausal, you will know that your mood swings on the corona coaster are bigger than ever. And if you regularly exercise and if you can cut down on the refined sugar, we can stop or we can um, make those mood swings less extreme. So it's not just in the general population, but sometimes for specific conditions, and so I'm pulling out um, menopause there as one of them, know how to look after your body, know how to stop yourself having these, yes, incredible highs, but these horrific lows. So we don't want our moods to be going up and down like a yo-yo. It's not great. We're <laughs> just bouncing off the walls. We definitely want to try and, you know, Steve, are you you're okay to, to kind of come back in and because we were always going to come to you and ask you yes. um, to kind of talk more about, about things anyway. So over to you and then if we can, I'm sure we can get Osla back. Perfect. Oh, well, um, if Osla comes back at any point, I can just stop and start again and we well, can. Well, I was going to say it's probably let's mm. let you do you a bit rather than us um, interrupt you. We'll, we'll let we'll message Osla and say, you know, Steve's going to do his piece now. And then if we can, we'll come back to her. So we'll not interrupt you. <laughs> right. OK, well, um, hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, and that's working. Um, great. So Osla was going to finish on a wonderful high talking about setting goals. And what better goal could you have than signing up to do a fantastic event? So the Cataran Yomp, I'm not sure how many people have heard of it, but last year it was going to be our 10th year extravaganza. So the first event was in 2011 and we have grown every year since then. And we are now uh, over a thousand people coming and taking, uh, taking on the challenge. So. For those who haven't heard, it is a 24 hour walk, although there is a 22 mile, a 36 mile and a 30 and a 54 mile option available. 
I think the easiest thing to do is to show you the video because that gives you a flavour of what. <laughs> Great. So the Yomp is a, a really wonderful experience, but I think one of the things I'd like to talk about is the reason why we founded the Yomp in the very first place. Um, ABF, the, the Soldiers Charity, um, has been around since 1944. We used to be known as the Army Benevolent Fund. Um, and what was happening is we were spending um, up to two million pounds a year in Scotland supporting Scottish veterans. And 10, 15 years ago, we weren't we weren't washing our face in Scotland, for want of a better expression. We weren't raising enough money from Scotland to keep supporting Scottish veterans. And so one of the ways that we looked to raise the profile of the charity and to raise some funds was to put an event right in the heart of Scotland in the beautiful Perthshire and Angus Glens and to give people a wonderful opportunity to come together as a team to have the shared goal of trying to complete the challenge together and having that team element is a huge part of it and to have a brilliant experience whilst also raising money for some incredible people and um, you'll know that the army has been instrumental in the last 10 months supporting the brilliant workers of the NHS and that's that's what the army do they do what they need to do to help support us and to protect us and what the soldiers charity does is it it sits there in the background making sure that those soldiers veterans and their families are supported as well and the yomp helps us to do that um the great thing about the yomp especially at the moment is it's a, a wonderful goal to set yourselves to do it is a shared goal as well as a team because it has that team element so it's brilliant for organizations at the moment who have been so split up and disparate 
to all come together and have this one objective that they're all looking to do. Um, there's a brilliant um, example. We've had a team from uh, both William Grant and Sons and Oracle who have signed up as, a, as an, on an organisational level. And what they've been able to do is assign roles for different people, whether that's be organising some volunteering, organising the team to go to bronze to 22 miles or to try and complete the whole gold route, which is 54 miles. It's been great to get interns or apprentices to have a role that crosses the whole organisation. And it, it's brought everyone together, even virtually, because it has that, that light at the end of the tunnel feel to it. The other thing is it's in the most incredible countryside. It's, I'm sure, you know it well and if you don't definitely try and get out there as soon as as soon as we're able to up to Glen Shee and and round Glen Isla is just a fantastic experience and the the different terrain as you experience as you go around is amazing and the support you get from the organization with the food and the massage and the podiatrists really just helps get you along so the great outdoors is is wonderful for both your personal well-being but also just to have that brilliant shared experience. And then there's the wider community side of it as well. Um, I'm going to show you the Facebook group, which has uh, carried on for all through the period of lockdown. And it's just a great community of people who are sharing their training walks and their fundraising successes. You know, this is over the last week of activity and the support that they're providing to each other. That notion that we are all going through this whole experience together and just to have these targets to set ourselves and these lights at the end of the tunnel and just to keep chipping away at it and how supportive signing up to a challenge like this can be and how it provides both the mental, the mental and the physical elements that help keep people going. So the um, event itself this year is on the 5th and 6th of June and we do remain really confident that we can go ahead. Um, it is in the most beautiful countryside and so distancing isn't going to be a problem and with the way the vaccinations are rolling out at the moment, with the way that um, the cases are going down, we're hopeful that as February, March and Easter come up that we start to see a building of momentum and to have an event like this, a flag in the sand for June, when we can start to see people we haven't seen for a long time, we can start to get people from the same organisation together in the same space, all taking on this challenge together, which is a both the personal side, gets you outside, gets you training, gets you getting your vitamin D as the sunlight increases every day, but also brings everyone together to, to show we've got through it all together and that we, at the same time, we raise some money to support the veterans and the families of people who have continued working through all of this, have continued putting themselves at the front line, whether that's overseas or in the UK. So 5th of 6th of June, uh, soldierscharity.org slash yomp. We'll send you all the link at the end of this. And we'd love to have lots of people involved. Um, whatever that involvement is, it can vary from signing up and taking part to being a to being a corporate team to take on the challenge. But also there's amazing opportunities around volunteering, uh, running the water stops and the and the incredible support that people have and um, sponsorship as well. It's an event that we are always looking to engage corporate partners to help cover the costs, to run their own water stop, to provide added value to participants. Uh, gin Bothy last year, oh, 2019, sorry, set up a gin stop on the side of a lock, which was a real highlight for everybody. And that was what all the Instagram photos were at the end of the event and fantastic publicity for, for Gin Bothy. And it shows the value of partnering with an event like this, with an organisation like ABF The Soldiers Charity, whether that's for internal staff engagement, for external press coverage, for brilliant uh, product engagement, 
there's uh, the, the, there's lots and lots of different ways of getting involved. And if anyone has any questions or would like to speak further, uh, my details will be shared as well. And Becky's on the call as well, who uh, is uh, a brilliant <laughs> employee of the Soldiers Charity and uh, is responsible for kind of delivering the project day to day. So that is me. I think Osla is back. She sure is. Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. That was really great. Um, and I've definitely got a few questions, but what I'll, we'll do is kind of hold them for the, the combined um, piece after Osla comes back on. So, Osla, um, do you want to have a go at sharing your screen? Um, your internet provider yeah. has done their best to derail you today, but we're not oh. having that, are we? <laughs> D definitely not. Um, yeah, there's always a... I think if I just go right into this one. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yes, this is yeah, where so um, I... Of stress have probably yeah. flown up a little bit. Um, well, yeah. And because um, what obviously happened is I mentioned the word menopause and the internet had a real meltdown. And um, so I'll move swiftly onwards. Um, so we were talking about chronic stress and um, chatting about how we can reduce um, chronic stress. But it's um, important to know that if you are being physically active, you have um, what, what kinds of activities are best for reducing stress and improving your mood because this is one of the questions I'm always getting asked at the moment it's like oh well I could do this that and the next thing and to be honest um, I always say well you know pick something you like um, what I would say is that if you are looking to lift your mood go out and do something now go out and do something today it will improve your mood almost immediately and this is the thing about physical activity and doing it you will get an instant mood improving response. So if that's what you need on um, on a daily basis, then get out and do something. Um, but if you are thinking longer term about, yes, I've got chronic stress, what should you do? Well, do the same thing, but do it every day and keep going. So we don't need to do you know, to improve your mood, you don't need to do yoga or you don't need to specifically go out and play football or you don't necessarily need to go out on your bike. What we need to think about is short term and long term. So if you are training for a walk event and you're out walking and you're having a great time, that's improving your mood immediately. But you get the long term benefits if you're going out and you're adhering to your walking programme. And the idea is that physical activities, no matter what they are, and if you get out and do them, you get short term and you get long term benefits. So it's all good. Um, there are also some things that um, people don't realise you can get a mental benefit from something that's physical. So for example, um, Again, if you're reducing your blood pressure, which mine is starting to lower now that I'm back on, fingers crossed, um, you can you can lower stress. Things like, um, and I put in there, improved digestive transit. So um, without getting too graphic, if you are sitting and you're in the house a lot and you're not moving, your digestive transit will slow down. Um, so instead of reaching for them Dulco Ease tablets that they're always advertising on the telly, um, by going out and being physically active, we can improve your gut comfort. So the idea is that you are active and then you're, you know, keeping your gut moving. Um, simple things like that. So if you are doing activities that improve your posture, we can help reduce pain. So, for example, I know lots of people who've been working from home and they're like, I've been working at the kitchen table, it makes my back sore. Well, we need to think about what kind of activities can you do so that you're not getting discomfort working in your home. Um, improving your confidence from weight control, from doing um, regular activity, you're reducing your anxiety. Um, so, and just being able to feel like you can take on what's been thrown at you each day. 
So if you've got that physical energy, you're you're like, right, come on, let's go. What are you going to throw at me today? I can handle it. So it's this idea that, yes, we get physical benefits, but we can get a mental benefit from that too. So it's a win-win, really, as well as all the other physical benefits that you know from being active, because there's lots of them and most people know them. They know those good health messages. So I don't need to go over them today. So trying to put it into context for people so that you understand um, why, why do we need to be active? What is it about being active that will help us? So if you think about, we're always trying to balance out pressures with resources that help alleviate those pressures. So the idea is we've got a list of things um, that are difficult. Um, so not moving on to that one. So um, that are difficult. So for example, if we think of load as um, I have work pressures, I have family commitments, I have caring requirements, um, I have work pressures. So all of these things are the loads that are placed upon us. But if we think about resources, resources are a good healthy diet, um, support from friends and family, but also things like being physically active so we get the benefits of activity. We think of, all right, well, we can balance ourselves out. We can get some kind of equilibrium by choosing to do things ourselves. What we don't want is if you've got your seesaw and you've got everything piled on the load side and then you're not accessing any resources. So that's how we can feel overwhelmed. We don't want that. We need to make sure that you can feel like, ah, oh, well, I've got some extra load placed upon me, but how can I get some extra resource? Can I ask friends and family? Can I go out for a longer walk today? Will that help? So it's understanding how that fits in to the process. And if you understand about this balance, this seesaw, often you're thinking, all oh, right, well, is this what's stopping me from being and staying active? So lots of people say to me, oh, I was like, yeah, it would be, you know, if I could just if I could just get out every day for a walk, but you know, I've got um, I've got the homeschooling on the go and uh, I've got to make sure that we're you know, cooking and I've got all these jobs to do and I have to nip out because I've always got to go to the chemist to get the prescriptions and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's often these barriers that um, people rightly have other things going on in their lives and you want to make sure that you know, you're, you're getting those jobs done. You are making sure you're fulfilling those responsibilities. Um, but at the same time, it's really important that you understand, well, where, where are the resources coming from to help with the caring responsibilities, the time pressures, your work commitments, um, family commitments. Um, you know, and yes, it's January and the weather isn't great. Um, and it's, you know, you've tried to do the home, uh, you know, workout things on YouTube and you've bashed into the furniture and, you know, stubbed your toe on the door and it's not really been a positive um, experience. So, you know, it's sometimes that puts you off and you think, mm, yeah, I'd rather maybe, you know, do something else. And don't discount, you know, pain, illness or injury. For some people, they think, well, I've, I've got this particular particular injury and that's stopping me from doing what I would normally do and it's you know trying to switch your head on to well are there other things out there that I can access and and do it's important to understand what your specific resources are you everyone's will be different but what I can say is that if you are not making sure you're balancing out your resources, you're going to become depleted. And when you become depleted, that really impacts on your mental health. So it's understanding a bit about, well, what is my responsibility to my self-care? And if you understand that, you understand the notion that if I am well and fit and healthy, I can be um, a better caregiver, I can be a better work colleague, I can. So it's about understanding, about making sure that you are being 
and giving yourself a chance to do all the things that you want to do. So it's like, oh, what are my resources? In the olden days, we used to get on aeroplanes. Do you remember that? Um, and we would get a, um, a little spiel about, oh, yes, and the brace, brace position. But there was a bit where they said, now, if the, um, the plane has gone into a bit of difficulty and we don't have an oxygen supply, the masks come down. At that point, you're always told to put on your mask first, because if something happens to you, you can't then help anyone around you. So the point is, if you are well and you are healthy, then you can help and support other people. But if you are a shell or you are a husk or you're struggling, then you can't do what you want to do. You can't be who you want to be. So it's really important to understand that feeling better is a priority and understanding that, you know, you sometimes you need to boost yourself up the list a little bit. So, you know, don't don't stick yourself at the bottom. You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm an afterthought. No, that's important that you're not an afterthought. It's important that you prioritise yourself a little more. It doesn't mean you need to be at the top of the list all the time. It just means don't put yourself at the bottom of the list all of the time. So hopefully that is kind of understandable. So um, I get asked this question a lot. Um, struggling with motivation. Um, how, how can I do this? You know, I go out and I maybe do an activity and then I feel it's hard to stick to it or other things come up. And um, so I like to call this the tough love slide. <laughs> um, and there's only one. Um, and I'll say my piece and then we'll move on. But if you are looking to make change, understand that change is difficult for everyone. Some people, it's not... It's not easy for them to get out and do it. It's hard for them. So and being empathetic to other people and saying, right, well, look at others as an inspiration so that you understand they have made some change. And yes, it's been difficult. So they might be able to help and support you. But as I said before, you know, it's about looking after yourself. It's self-care and, you know, change takes work. Um, you, it's important to invest in yourself. Why? Because the bigger the investment, the bigger the payout. So if you're really looking after yourself, then you are going to be happier and healthier. And so making that commitment to do it is tough. Um, sitting at home, um, dealing with disease or terrible anxiety or anything that is hard to bear, is hard but also getting out of the house putting your boots on committing to a training program that is also hard but what i do say is it's your choice it's your choice to choose your heart you can pick and sometimes once you get your head around that concept yes we can work at making ourselves happy so yeah lecture over let's move on how can we work at making ourselves happy ah oh, it's easy peasy because we have um, chemicals in our brain that can help us to do that. Whoop, whoop. Um, when you are physically active, um, your brain um, releases, you, so into your brain comes um, dopamine, it's released into your uh, brain, and that helps us to boost our mood. We have these feelings of reward, we have these feelings of motivation. So once you do it, once you've made that change, because you have dopamine, that helps with the doing it the second time, doing it the third time, committing to that program. And yes, we can boost these chemical levels naturally, um, simply by exercising often and also trying to eat um, a low fat diet. And when we eat saturated fats, that affects how the receptors in our brain works, the receptors that respond to dopamine. So if you can make small changes in, in what you eat and you can uh, reduce the saturated fat, then when you release dopamine, we get more of a hit. So you've heard the expression getting high on life. Well, this is it. This is this is the getting high on life. The other things to remember, I'm kind of racing through this a bit now, so I can see we've got shorter levels of time. You can elevate your own dopamine levels by getting enough sleep, listening to music, meditating, 
spending outside, uh, spending time outside in sunlight. So yes, your vitamin D levels are boosted, but really importantly, from my perspective, you will also boost your dopamine levels. So if you are signing yourself up to a challenge where you're going to be out, out of doors um, for you know, a serious amount of miles, then actually the, le the dopamine levels are going to be off the scale. So if I am selling um, the Cataran Yomp to you as a way of getting a natural high, then go for it. There is nothing wrong with being addicted to your own dopamine levels. And often people who are really regularly physically active, that's what it is. They love, they love their dopamine, so they want to go out and they want to get more. So the idea is that if we can be active, think about reducing our saturated fat levels, it's all good. Um, another thing to kind of be aware of is that um, activities so can be meditating in themselves. So for example, when you walk, um, the act of walking itself can be meditative. So one foot in front of the other, the rhythm, the cadence of walking um, makes you feel good. So you're outside, it's exercise and it's active meditation. Bonus, it's all good. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a phrase, it's a Japanese word, shin rin yoko. Um, and it means literally nature bathing. Um, and I love this idea that when you are outside and especially in nature, wild nature in particular, the element of nature somehow replenishes us. Um, I often refer it to um, as my outdoor batteries. So when I go out and I'm in nature, um, those outdoor batteries get filled up um, and I can kind of rely on the feeling that I get from being in nature to kind of um, help and support me till I can get out the next time I'm in nature. Um, I'm a big uh, fan of hill walking and mountaineering and although I can't get to the mountains right now, um, I definitely want to make sure that I'm getting out enough so that I'm, and I'm so used to being able to do that that I'm having to work at keeping my outdoor batteries topped up. Um, and because I can't do what I would normally do at the moment, I am doing other things. So I have um, discovered there's a place close by me where I can go out and see red squirrels and they are turned into my saviour pals. Um, but, you know, understanding that when you're out in a forest, what it's like to walk in trees, listening to birdsong, all of these things really um, can help kind of soak into you and help and support you. So absolutely, we can um, work on our happiness um, and it's not difficult. Um, it's just committing to that um, day by day by day by day. Um, last little bit um, before questions. So thinking about what I've mentioned, that if you get out and do something, on a daily basis, um, it can be in the house, you know, if the weather's particularly bad, you know, a Zoom activity session's great, but if you can get outside, even better, because we want to look at how do you boost your mood every day. I like to think of this as having one everyday pleasure, one everyday thing that makes you feel good. And because it's a simple thing, it's an achievable thing. So you can go tick, Easy peasy, next day, done it, tick. As soon as you start achieving your goals, then success breeds success. That helps with the longer term goal setting. So often people used to say, oh, right, well, I've committed this year to, you know, I want to be fitter and healthier. And then I'll say, why? And then they look at me, well, because I should. And I'm like, right, well, <laughs> you're never going to achieve that goal ever. Unless you have a really specific short term goal and a longer term goal. And this is where this commitment part kind of really comes into, uh, into play. Is your longer term goal about learning a new skill? Is it about joining a challenge? Is it about raising money or awareness for a charity? 
can you use it to chart your progress? What things can you do? So, for example, um, we had the example of the Facebook and people, they've got photographs and they've got walk routes. I look back on that and go, oh, total result. I started here, but I finished there. And also persuading someone to join you. Um, because you want to make sure that your goals are going to work for you. So in your mind, I want you to think, am I someone who kind of likes cooking or am I someone who likes to bake? Which? So have a think. And the reason why I usually ask this question is that people who cook like to go, hmm, well, this is the recipe. However, I'm just going to chuck in a little bit of this and take out that and do this thing. And et voila, here is my thing that I have cooked. Bakers, on the other hand, have a very precise, specific list of ingredients that you can't mess with or the cake won't come out of the oven. It'll just be like soup. Um, and they want some specific rules to follow. If you are a rule follower, understand that the goals that you set yourself need to be really specific. But if you're someone who kind of, you know, oh, I like a little bit of this and I want to do a little bit of that, you need to make sure that your options are kind of guidelines. Because if you're not following the rules and then you get fed up, you'll go, oh, well, I'm not doing it. So it's understanding how are you as an individual? Do you want rules? Do you want maybe a set of guidelines for the week? And you can pick when you want to do those things. That will help you in your goal setting and that will help you to achieve and it'll help you to be successful. So understanding how you, how you, what kind of options you need to go for. But ultimately, you need to be accountable. And this is something that um, Steve mentioned. Are you going to be accountable to yourself? So deciding, yep, I'm going to step up. I'm going to do this. I am going to um, make that change. Um, what do I need to do to make that change? Um, but yeah, the more people you tell about your plan, the better. Because once once you've said it, you're in it. You're, you know, it's like, oh, well, can't back out now. And being as part of a team as well, you know, helping and supporting other people. You don't want to let them down. You are making yourself accountable to your team members. So all of that is super important um, understanding that you know you are investing not just in yourself but then in other people and perhaps also in a charity not just in the fundraising but also in the um, raising awareness aspect so whatever you choose to do try to um, get out there try to oh where are we where are we Come back. Am I still in the room? Oh yeah, here we go. Yep, I'm still here. Um, try and um, you know, do all of those things, but you know, do it for yourself. Invest in yourself. Um, hopefully, I haven't flown through that too quickly. Um, and it's getting right on for twelve o'clock, so I'm going to stop talking now. And if there are any questions and we don't have time um to do that today, then absolutely you can um, email me, and I'll be only too happy to get in touch regarding that. Perfect. Brilliant. Osla, thank you so much. Um, what we will do is still do, uh, you know, let's see how many questions we've got and um, see what people's time is like. I've definitely got a few questions. Osla, if you would stop sharing your screen and then I'm um, just doing that, we'll get you back. There you go. Yay. Yeah. Um, so if you've got any questions, you want to put your hand up virtually or you want to take yourself off mute or drop something into the chat let's just kind of um do all of the above um i it, very interesting very 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 interesting from both of you uh, osla i'm so much a cook and not a baker um, although <laughs> i absolutely surprised myself and i think it was december by baking a cake and i, I thought this is going to be really bad but it was pretty good. So I slightly have a cake baking bug, but yeah, no, 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 I'm not very good at, um, it, it, I need a fluid goal. I think you're absolutely right. And as you were talking about that, I think that's what appeals to me about that February challenge I've signed up. I've got a month to do 280,000 steps. So 
if I don't do 10,000 on a Tuesday, it doesn't matter because I'll just go out and walk and walk and walk on a Saturday. Um, so, yeah, but that that's super interesting. Um, Okie doke. Uh, Wendy uh, Mockman on the chat is asking about thoughts or suggestions on team training. When we live in different areas, how do we motivate each other? So I guess, you know, it's probably a question for both of you. Should I kick off? Is that OK, right. I, um, I think it's it's to do with that shared goal. You're all working towards the same objective and how you kind of chip off the training to do it is is actually part of the fun of it. Um, it is amazing how um, on groups like Strava, you can track your walks and you can actually form little clubs between you and your friends and you can share the walks you go out on. Instagram and Facebook are just brilliant places to to share um, what you're doing and to celebrate what you're doing and setting little weekly challenges for your teammates is always a really good way we found of getting people out and training. Um, Alison was telling me earlier that uh, trying to get up the Sidlaws. Sidlaws, is that right? That's is it. the place, yep, yeah, is the, you know, that's the that's a pretty nippy hill and uh, you know I'll, I'll, I'll walk up the Sidlaws three times this week and I'll take a photo of, or WhatsApp all my friends at the top each time and I think that's just a great way of of celebrating success of holding yourself accountable as Osla was saying and uh, and and getting your your training in as well. Um, yeah, I'm just going to echo uh, what Steve said. I'm um, I'm a big follow. I'm a big user of Strava, um, but absolutely setting up your own little um, groups on whatever platform you go with, so that you can share. So photos, routes, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but perhaps another thing is, you know, get a group vlog together using um, absolutely getting a wee Facebook channel, a YouTube channel rather, so that you can. Um, update people on what you're up to, your success. So if you, again, it's an accountability thing. If you've committed to doing it um, and you're starting to tell a story, um, especially if you're going to do some fundraising because people want to know what you're up to. So I would say absolutely that, but also then maybe, you know, utilising social media maybe a little bit more if that's possible. Yeah, I think that those are those are really good suggestions, aren't they? Um, Steve, we've had a question about is there an age restriction for the YOMP? And while you answer that, can I also ask you another question specifically about the YOMP? Um, when I did the, the challenge last September, there was obviously a fundraising element to it because the charity like you was finding that it wasn't able to put on the normal kinds of things to, to help fundraise. And so they created specific Facebook fundraisers as, as things that as individuals we could really quite easily sign up to. Um, I don't really know how that would work as a team but I'm just interested if you're adopting that kind of strategy as well this time around and then the age thing. Yes um, so on the age thing uh, we have an age uh, of 16 to do bronze which is 22 miles and then 18 to carry on beyond that point. Um, so we do have um, scout groups and cadet groups and uh, and some schools colleges come and do the bronze and actually that's a fantastic day because you set off at seven o'clock in the morning, you finish mid afternoon, you know, that's it's 22 miles is still a, a, a really big challenge, but also then you, you get home for the evening and it's uh, you can you, you can have a nice uh, a nice supper and a warm bed and and then you could even come out in the morning to watch people stagger across the finish line another 15 hours later <laughs> um, uh, on the team fundraising side of things as you register the system we use for registration which is on soldierscharity.org slash yomp you go through the registration process and you can set up your team there and you can set up um, you're automatically created with a fundraising page so everyone has an individual fundraising page but it all links into your team page so um, you know often a team has the same set of uh, colleagues or friends um, you can share that team page and it's a great way to for, for people just to you know make one donation to support all of you as opposed to having to pick their favorite um, and of course then that's a brilliant way of that team page is a great thing of sharing photographs and sharing uh, training walks and things like that as well perfect 
Thank you. Um, Gillian on the chat is asking, do we do you have any advice, suggestions as how we can best incorporate a stand up or a stretch into online training session? Um, Osla, is that something that um, and if, you, if you want Gillian to come in and kind of expand on it or just talk about it, then just say so. Um, I suppose it depends on what training it is you're doing. Um, so absolutely, it depends what part of your body you want to stretch. So I would say if you can incorporate, you know, there's lots of really great online yoga out there. So popping some of that into like your weekly plan, if that's something that you want to do, you don't necessarily have to do something and then stretch immediately after to get the benefit. Um, and it also depends on, you know, like, what is it that you're stretching? So, for example, are you out training for Cataran Yomp? In which case, um, do you need to know some stretches for your quads, your hip flexors, your your calf muscles, and your hamstrings? In which case, you know, if you Google those things, you'll be able to find them really easy. You don't need me to kind of demonstrate right now. Um, so, I hope that's maybe answered your question. But if it's not, Gillian, type away yeah, or just, get in. I'll say, Gillian, feel free to come in. Hi there, thank you. Sorry, I didn't explain that particularly um, well. So we're, we're developing online training sessions for companies that, sort of, you know, they may last about two and a half hours. We'll have a coffee break in them, but it's an awful long time to have someone sitting in front of a screen um, where, when we're presenting to them. And, and it was, you know, a thought that we'd had that, you know, should we sh schedule in periodic, just, you know, stand up, stretch, whatever. And how often should we do that and what would they look like? So um, if I was doing something like that, every 20 minutes I would have a wee um, alarm to self. And yes, you could get up and do a thing. Um, I think once you're sitting for a long period of time, what happens is your body essentially goes to sleep. It's in homeostasis. So what we want to do is not only does it kind of get you moving, but it actually also really refreshes your brain. Um, so we want to increase blood flow to the brain a little so you can get up and do something. It doesn't necessarily need to be a stretch. It can be a you know, you could get up and do the like a verse of the hokey cokey if you wanted. <laughs> um, and, you know, you can make that fun and enjoyable. You know, you can do um, teams musical statues. If somebody um, pops on a wee bit of music, there's also kind of you can make it fun. It doesn't necessarily mean to you know, for your health. We must make you stand and do a wee um, yoga warrior now. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be something that's poor face. But what I would say is if you can stand up every 20 minutes, do something that's for a 10 seconds, 15 seconds and sit back down again. Yeah, and it's going to be better for your posture too. That's great, thank you. Brilliant, um, already got loads of ideas what we can do in the middle of team meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, question, I suppose, uh, uh, sort of, I'm thinking about the yomp, but but more generally, obviously, because Osla, you've got so much experience, you were talking about, you know, the how you enjoy going up the hills. So it's about equipment, um, really. Uh, Steve, what what are the the kind of the things you see people doing wrong, I guess, in getting themselves ready for the yomp? Um, do they all buy brand new kit and then they can't walk in it, or do they? You know, yeah, I'm just interested in that. <laughs> yes, I mean uh, the mistakes we see often come down to a lack of preparation, and it's the same with uh, um, lots of lots of these sorts of challenges um, that fail to prepare, prepare to fail elements of it. Um, if you're out and about in in some quite remote parts of, of, of the Perthshire Hills uh, for 24 hours, you do need to be properly prepared. So we do have a, a kit list which we require people to have, which is, you know, waterproofs, fleeces, telephones, torches, those sorts of things. Um, and the best thing to do is just to get out and to and to go on a training walk and to to know which shoes fit, to know which socks work for you, to know which waterproof works for you. Um, and the more you can do, the, the more outside you get, and the more training you do, the better. The the amazing thing about the yomp that I've uh, I, I can never stand on the start line and pick who's going to finish. It's it it's it's not the young. 17 year old soldiers who are bouncing up and down and ready to tear off as fast as they can like they, they get to 
bronze and are completely exhausted and 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 broken it's it's the people that um have the right mental approach to it that have the right uh that pace themselves that have that team support element so they all get through it together because everyone has ups and downs as they go and the rest of the team help pull them through and and so for example in 2018 we had an 84 year old who managed to get to bronze and he was there with his sons and he he, he did the bronze routes which in, for, for those who have done the job does have a goes up and down uh, the spittle of Denshi, which is uh, a steady climb to, to say the least um so it is one of those incredible things that actually there's a mental side of it as well as a physical side of it and if you prepare properly properly with your kit with your training then then you can achieve it oh so do you want to um, add anything yeah i was just going to add that what steve said about training is that training also breeds confidence so if you know and understand what you what your capabilities are through having completed your training you will know and you will be confident in your approach so he's right you need to make sure that um, this part of your body is really prepared and it's just as important to prepare this as it is to prepare your feet as it is to prepare you know like if you don't wear a new rucksack to go and do it for goodness sake you'll get welts right across your back that would be you know that'd be so uncomfortable and you end up having to duct tape up your back so that you don't get um, horrendous um, blisters and bruises um so yeah don't do anything new in the few weeks before don't use any new kit um get out do it repeat it repeat it be confident that you are able to do it and also make sure you've surrounded yourself with um, in your team with people who are just as positive as you and you're right to help and support each other so you know if you've got the if you've got the teamwork right it's it's definitely a goer for sure Brilliant. I think that's a, a really great way to, to kind of finish. No more questions in the chat and no hands up by the look of it. Um, I just want to kind of say that um, when we were looking at doing the YOM, not last year, but the year before, um, we said that the Chamber were going to put in a team and any members that wanted to join in with that kind of Chamber team so that they you know, didn't have to go looking for a, a, a corporate team of their own if that was what they didn't want to do, um, were very, very welcome to kind of join us. So that's our approach this year we're going to put in a chamber team it will not be solely just for people that work in our organization but any members anybody that's you know in business on their own or you know if you've got a bigger business but only two or three want to do it then please feel free to join in um hopefully you're really really good at fundraising you're really good at motivating and training and then we're all on the same page so um thank you so much um to to both osla and steve for coming on today i i think you know we I, I talked at the beginning about how long january feels normally never mind in the midst of a lockdown and i think you know from what we're hearing from people you know the, the first lockdown there was there was a bit of um, kind of blitz spirit we're all in it together it's only going to be a few weeks and it's really it you know we can get outdoors and you could go and sit in your garden in your lunch hour and it was quite nice and it was a pretty nice summer this one's been pretty different um, but you know if you watch the the speed of the vaccinations the the kind of the percentage of, of vaccinations that the UK is is kind of at already um, in terms of you know how we're doing globally we're we're vaccinating a lot an awful lot of people um, and that will help us get out and about more and um, stay safe and um, but look after yourself and look after your mental health so thank you so much and um, really really appreciate it well done to Sarah for getting us all organized and um, as ever this will be on our YouTube channel so you can go back and and kind of pick up anything that you missed but um really really great session I thoroughly appreciate your time and look forward to catching up with you at something else and um, we've got a few events coming up next week and Sarah will will keep you up to date on all of those but enjoy the rest of your Wednesday everybody. See you later. Bye.